In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that, relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of the Kings. Solomon called the elders of Israel together in Jerusalem to bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord up from the citadel of David, which is Zion. All the men of Israel assembled round King Solomon in the month of Athenim at the time of the feast, that is, the seventh month. And the priests took up the Ark and the Tent of Meeting with all the sacred vessels that were in it. In the presence of the ark, King Solomon and all Israel sacrificed sheep and oxen, countless, innumerable. The priests brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place in the debir of the temple, that is, in the holy of holies, under the cherub's wings. For there where the ark was placed, the cherubs spread out their wings and sheltered the ark and its shafts. There was nothing in the ark except the two stone tablets Moses had placed in it at Horeb, the tablets of the covenant, which the Lord had made with the Israelites when they came out of the land of Egypt. They are still there today. Now when the priests came out of the sanctuary, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord, and because of the cloud, the priests could no longer perform their duties. The glory of the Lord filled the Lord's temple. Then Solomon said, The Lord has chosen to dwell in the thick cloud. Yes, I have built you a dwelling, a place for you to live in forever. The Word of the Lord. Go up, Lord, to the place of your rest. At Ephrata we heard of the ark. We found it in the plains of Urim. Let us go to the place of his dwelling. Let us go to kneel at his footstool. Go up, Lord, to the place of your rest. Go up, Lord, to the place of your rest, you and the ark of your strength. Your priests shall be clothed with holiness. Your faithful shall ring out their joy. For the sake of David your servant, do not reject your anointed. Go up, Lord, to the place of your rest. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Having made the crossing, Jesus and his disciples came to land at Gennesaret, and tied up. No sooner had they stepped out of the boat than people recognized him and started hurrying all through the countryside and brought the sick on stretchers to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, to village or town or farm, they laid down the sick in the open spaces, begging him to let them touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all those who touched him were cured. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever experienced on calling a person on the street because he or she looks similar to your friend from the rear view or the side view? I have. 
After that person turns, and knowing that it's not my friend, immediately that feeling of embarrassment. And just cannot help to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought you are my friend. And why I tell you this is because of the key word pertaining to today's reading, which is to recognize. Do we, brothers and sisters, recognize Jesus? In today's gospel, it's only four verses long. This may be the shortest reading in the lectionary. St. Mark's gospel is full of movement. And several times already we have come across this phrase, they crossed over or the crossing or they go to the other side. And this crossing over for us can mean leaving something behind in order to be with Jesus. And this demands a readiness from our heart to take risk, to step away from what is familiar to us, from what is comfortable to us, into the unfamiliar, into the uncomfortableness, and to follow Jesus to some new situation. Jesus in today's gospel is moving through the countryside and the people are flocking to see him. If we read few verses before that, Jesus performs his first loaf's miracle, which is feeding the 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes. And people rush to Jesus with their needs and their hopes because they recognize him. Dear friends, maybe you and I need to follow the example, which is to recognize Jesus and bringing in us what is in need of healing. It is often the struggles and the painful experiences of life that opens us up to the Lord. And St. Paul bears witness to that. When he was struggling with his thorn and his flesh, he said and pleaded to the Lord three times to get rid of this thorn. And he heard the Lord say and reply to him, my power is made perfect in weakness. My power is made perfect in weakness. Dear friends, just like King Solomon in today's first reading, who recognizes God in the visible sign of the covenant by building a temple and place the ark there, we too in our lives should recognize and to see the presence, the presence of Jesus in the sacraments especially in Holy Eucharist. And by doing so, the Lord can come powerfully to us in our weakness if we, like the people in the Gospel today, hurry towards Him. Do we recognize Jesus? At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.